Sometimes you hit it just right. No chasing, no planning, no strategy needed. Wednesday, March 9th was that kind of day. I had come to the S-Line from the west in the late afternoon, and as soon as I arrived at Dade City, the action began. It was Q251 with two standard cab dash eights. I moved down about a mile, two crossing south, when here came Q-170, screaming north to Jacksonville. Then south another quarter mile to the Dade City Depot, and it was K-425, southbound ethanol loads for Tampa with three Union Pacifics pulling. Another three miles further south, and here was NO40, Orlando Coal Loads. That's the control point Ellerslie at the crest of the hill, another standard cab dash eight leading. train cleared, it revealed Q604 waiting in the Vitus siding. It's technically a four-mile double track here, but I've seen it used more like a pass track than two main lines. 604 is northbound out of Lakeland with more Dash 8 era power gradually pulling his train forward. Stopped trains have to be ever so slowly pulled into motion until every car is moving forward. This keeps down the force that's released when the slack between the cars is pulled out which could pull couplers open or even break them, an event railroaders call getting a knuckle. When 604 finally got going northward, I sprinted down to Zephyr Hills, where I heard somebody calling signals from the south. How many of us have been chasing trains and seen this situation happen? Coming up to the crossing when the signals begin flashing, barely giving us time to get out of the truck. The train meeting me at Zephyr Hills was K972, empty rock hoppers out of Tampa for KMAC, Georgia. 
a Jeevo, and an AC 4400 CW leading this one. Thanks for riding with me on this 90-minute rail fanning afternoon in March. At milepost ARF 838.4, Zephyr Hills, Florida, this is Danny Harmon, out.